Praise God, for he is worthy of all honor and glory. Today, we're going to do this study because I fell out from a pastor because God allowed me to see that she was out of order. Her church was out of order. And I just mentioned what I saw, which upset her because I said it while I was preaching. So why does God have an organization? One, why did God organize ancient Israel? God organized descendants of the patriarch Abraham into a nation and gave them a body of Lord. He called the nation Israel and made it the cust or made it the custodian of true worship and of his word. Psalm 147. 19 and 20. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his Lord. Praise the Lord, for he is mighty. So people of all nations could benefit from Israel. And how do we know that? Why don't you read Genesis 22 and 18. Genesis 22 and 18. Let's try 22:12 first. Dates. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Wait a minute. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declared the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the city of their enemies, 18 here, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. You want to know how to get blessed by God? All they have to do is obey Him. Amen. God chose the Israelite to be His witnesses. Their ancient history provides a demonstration of how people benefit by obeying God's law. Deuteronomy four and six, which says, "Observe them carefully." For this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations. Who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now, here in the scriptures, we find a great nation. And this great nation has wisdom and understanding that comes from God. Why? Because they are God-fearing and they obey the law. So when America becomes God-fearing and obedient to the law, we will become a great nation. And only when we become obedient to the Lord. Amen? Thus, through the Israelites, others could get to know the true God. And if you want to make sure... Of this, why don't you try reading Isaiah 43, 10, and 12. You are my witnesses, declared the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was informed. Nor will there be one after me. 
12. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declared the Lord, that I am God. Amen. Why are true Christians organized? In time, Israel lost God's favor and Jehovah replaced that nation with the Christian congregation. Matthew 21, 43. 23, 37-38. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a heritage for here, gather her checks under her wings, but you were not willing. Oh God, 38, look, your house is left to, to you desolate. Amen. For God's word is blessed by itself. Now, in place of the Israelite, true Christians serve as God's witnesses. Okay. What he does for us. Amen. Acts 15, 14 through 17. Simon had described to us how God at first showed his concern by taking from the Gentile a people for himself. 15. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this, as it is written. 16. After this, I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild and I will restore it. 17. That the remnant of men may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things, 18, that have been known for ages. Amen. Jesus organized his followers to preach and make disciples in all nations. Matthew 10, 7, 11, 24, 14, 28, 19, and 20. Matthew 7, 11. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. 11. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. Now, notice the message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Doesn't that sound like a doomsday message? Alas, plea for men and women to open up their eyes and understand that God is calling them into his house. 24:14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So God is going to preach 
the gospel of his kingdom to all nations, which we know it has been preached to all nations. And that must happen before the end comes, right? 28, 19 and 20. 28, 19 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Now, if you look at this, God is saying, listen, I'm giving you the word. I'm telling you, this is the message that I want you to preach. Preach the message. The message is important. He's not saying the fan prayer. He's not saying the gospel concert. He's saying it is the message of God that is important for my people. They need to learn about the kingdom and they need to learn it fast. Because the kingdom is getting ready to come upon them. Amen? This work is reaching its climax now. In the conclusion of the present system of things, for the first time in history, our God has united millions from all nations in true worship. Revelation 7, 9, and 10. Praise God. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne. And in front of the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Wow. True Christians are organized to encourage and help one another worldwide. They enjoy the same programs of Bible instruction at their meetings. You can read Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how we may spur out for one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day is approaching. So when we fellowship and come together, we're supposed to come together to encourage one another. It doesn't have to be partying, you know, it could be in having a conversation. It could be in studying the word. You know, it can be just learning brotherly love, how to love a foreigner that you might have had problems with. You know, how to forgive a person that has hurt you. These are the important things that we need to learn as Christians because we have too many immature Christians in the church today. Amen. Three, how did the modern day organization of these missionaries, um, ministers, world evangelists begin? In the 1870s, the small group of Bible students began rediscovering long lost Bible truth. They knew that Jesus had organized the Christian congregation to preach. So they began an international kingdom preaching campaign. So if you read Acts 1, 8, 2, 1, 4, 5. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Two, one. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Let's go to four. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and begun to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Move to 542, which reads, Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Now, in the day of Paul, they went from house to house, preaching and teaching. It was a very intimate group. And when I'm talking intimacy, I'm not talking sexual. I'm talking they ate together. Sometimes they slept in the same house. It was unity and brotherhood. They shared meals. They shared money. Amen. And this is how the church began. But we have to remember, God never intended the church to be a building. The church is our body, and we're supposed to take care of our body. And it's sad because... By a strain from the word of God, we also have strayed from the understanding of knowing how to best take care of our body, mind, and spirit. So we must get back to the basic elements, my brothers and sisters. Amen? Number four. How... How are these ministers organized? In the first century, the Christian congregation in many lands benefited from a central governing body that recognized Jesus as the head of the congregation. Acts 16, 4 and 5. Acts 16, 4 and 5. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decision reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the church was strengthened in the faith and grew daily in number. And when we follow the word of God, we end up growing daily because we're living the word of God. Amen? Similarly today, people worldwide from a governing body of experienced elders. It oversees branch offices throughout the world. What they call, many people call, con what they call them, convocations. So, all over, they write, they, people, different organizations you find Make up Bibles and different books pertaining to worshiping God. Thus, the governing body can provide scriptural encouragement and direction for over 100,000 congregations worldwide. In each congregation, qualified men serve as elders or overseers. And I'm going to say qualified men and women. Especially now, since the Catholic Church is looking to um, appoint women as bishops. Qualified men and women serve as elders or overseers. These men lovingly care for God's flock. 1 Peter 5, 2 and 3. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers. Not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be. Not greedy for money, 
but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Amen. This is God's will for us. That was Peter, 1 Peter 5, 2 and 3. So, ministers are organized to preach the good news and make disciples. Like the apostles, we preach from house to house. Acts 2020. 20. We also offer to study the Bible with sincere lovers of truth. And you would find that a lot of um, Jehovah Witnesses, they go from door to door and house to house um, to bring the word to the people. And we need to see that in the different religious organization or the other de denominations because this is truly what Jesus did. He went from house to house. So again, in each religion there are positives and negatives that need to be considered. So most believers should not just be an organization, but they should be a family of believers with our loving Father, God, the Creator, as the head, and Jesus as our brother in Christ. We are brothers and sisters who care for one another. Second Thessalonians 1 and 3. Since God's people are organized to please God and to help others. They form the happiest family on earth. And this is what I look for when I'm looking for a Christian brother or sister. What about you? I don't mind helping anyone. Don't try to take advantage of me, but allow me to help you. And if I'm helping you, I, I would like you to help back, you, you know? Um, but some people don't know how to do that. So read Psalm 33 and 12 and Acts 20, 35. Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. Acts 20, and 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the word the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen.